Hello everyone, I'm Santir, and welcome to the introduction to the Dervish part of my Guild Wars 1 skill review project. And uh, in this episode, I'm going to go over some of the mechanics and stuff about the, the Dervish and how it works. Uh, I will also note that the Dervish, like the Paragon, has overall fewer skills available to it in his profession. What happened with the release of the games is Guild Wars 1 Prophecies came out introducing the core six professions of Warrior, Ranger, Monk, Necromancer, Mesmer, and Elementalist. And then Factions came out and introduced the Assassin and the Ritualist, which we have covered at this point, as well as adding skills to the uh, original six professions. And then Nightfall came out and introduced the Dervish and Paragon, as well as adding skills to the previous eight professions. So as you go on, the Dervish and Paragon got com uh, comparatively fewer skills. Uh, Eye of the North came out and added like 10 skills to every profession, but... That means that uh, the Dervish and the Paragon have overall fewer skills, so they have kind of less to work with. Um, but the Dervish itself is... Um, what you also saw uh, with that development is that sort of the creative ideas for what are these professions, um, they're less general and a little bit more specific, or they're trying to push into different areas. So the Dervish is specifically pushing into the area of, okay, we have the monk as kind of a disciple or servant of the gods, but there's a lot of different archetypes there. Uh, and the monk, as it is portrayed in Guild Wars 1, is much more European idea of monk. It's, it's much more the idea of the sort of priest character, the, the character that is a disciple of the monk, a uh, disciple of the gods, and trying to heal people. It, it's going in that direction more. So it, it would perhaps traditionally be much more of the like priest class rather than uh, what people may traditionally think of as monk. I know for me, I have usually thought of monk in the Guild Wars one mold, but a lot of people are influenced by like D and D, which use more of a martial arts artist sort of mold. So when it came time to do Nightfall, they wanted to emphasize this sort of uh, devotion to the gods aspect and attribute which becomes really important over the course of the story so it makes sense that they do that and so the dervish is introduced as kind of a, a offensively focused counterpart to the monk so if you look at dervish attribute lines you'll notice that there's wind prayers and earth prayers these prayers are very similar to well i'm slash monk you can see healing prayers smiting prayers and protection prayers the idea here is that the dervish is also a, sort of a disciple of the gods, also pays attention to the gods, is also uh, a very pious, holy individual, but rather than the priest angle, it's the holy warrior sort of angle. And because of some of the theming and stuff, it, it gets flavored a little bit differently. So the um, the dervish, then, that's kind of their, their thematic, their uh, flavor. But mechanically, the way that this plays out is kind of a, an interesting focus on enchantments. And specifically, the Dervish has an interesting relationship with enchantments uh, that I'll get into in a moment here. But it also has two different types of enchantments. It has flash enchantments as well as regular enchantment spells. Flash enchantments are kind of like skills. So if I use this, um, actually, a, a demonstration over here would be better. So let's say I am uh, auto-attacking this target, and you'll notice I'm hitting the foe adjacent to me because sides hit multiple enemies. If I use a regular enchantment, I have to stop to do the animation for it. But if I use a flash enchantment, I don't. So flash enchantments happen instantly. Now, when you use a flash enchantment, uh, it does disable all of your other flash enchantments for one second, which I didn't think about including another one to demonstrate that. But that's a property of flash enchantments is that they will uh, disable the other enchantment around them. Also, there's a lot of dervish skills that do things when they end. So, uh, flash enchantments are basically made to be added and then removed. So, for example, this one, Balthazar's Rage, when I use it, it sets all nearby foes on fire for three seconds. For 20 seconds, it just chills on me, and then when it ends, I gain two strikes of adrenaline if there are any foes within earshot range. That property is there because... If I, say, use Twin Moon Sweep, well, that one's gone down, uh, Pious Assault right here, it's an attack that removes a Dervish enchantment. Very important to note, it's a Dervish enchantment. There's a lot of things that care about Dervish enchantments. So that's why I have Vigorous Spirit, a monk spell on my bar. If I use this, then, like, this will not take it. So, for example, 
Um, okay, l let me finish going over what this does. If, it, if I removed a Dervish enchantment with this skill, then it recharges faster and adjacent foes take damage. So if I have just um, Vigorous Spirit on me and I use this, it didn't do any additional damage. You would see that as 27s that pop up. And there weren't any. And you'll also notice it's taking the full 12 seconds to recharge. Also, Vigorous Spirit's still on me because it didn't get removed. Let me preserve those guys for a moment. Uh, if I use Balthazar's Rage and then Vigorous Spirit to put Vigorous Spirit on top and use this, well, you saw the 27 damages pop up and Balthazar's Rage went away. Vigorous Spirit's still there. So there's a lot of skills that care about Dervish enchantments, but they will care about any Dervish enchantment. Vigorous uh, Mystic Vigor here is not a Flash enchantment, but it is a Dervish enchantment. So if I stack things again and use Twin Moon, uh, Twin Moon Sweep here, it removed a Dervish enchantment. I removed Mystic Vigor and hit twice, which is what it does if I remove an enchantment. Um, but it removed Mystic Vigor even though Vigorous Spirit was above it. So there's a bunch of skills like that that specifically care about Dervish enchantments and removing them. But there's also skills that care about being enchanted. So Mystic Vigor here cares about me being enchanted. Now I'm being enchanted a lot by Windborn Speed, so I guess that serves as an example as well. Um, if I have Mystic Vigor on me, it says I gain 13 health for each enchantment on me, maximum of 25 health. So if I attack with just it, I gain 13 health. If I have, say, Vigorous Spirit on me as an additional enchantment, I will gain 25. The 15, of course, being from Vigorous Spirit itself. So that's some about how some of the enchantment stuff works. There are some skills that also, like Mystic Sweep right here, just cares about being enchanted. Uh, if I am enchanted, it does additional things. Uh, and that's regardless of what, what type of enchantment I have. So that's kind of the flash enchantment mechanic, the stripping down enchantment. Um, now, dervishes, as, as you've been noticing, use scythes. And that's their weapon. Ignore the inaccuracies about how scythes actually work in combat. And scythes have this property that you may have been noticing, where they actually hit up to uh, three enemies. So they hit your targeted foe as well as up to two adjacent foes. So size attack in an area of effect. They are slower attacking. I forget the exact attack rate. Um, I think there's somewhere currently between uh, like swords, axes, and uh, hammers. Um, there might actually be, I don't know. Do you have, do you have any information about this stuff? Um, tell me about attacking. No, that's that's definitely not. Uh, anyway, there might be some NPC around here that has information on that sort of stuff. I have no idea where to look, though, so I'm not going to bother running off and looking for that. Oh, hey, Raza. Um, but yeah, so sides are generally considered very good. Their damage range is quite large, 9 to 41, so they are somewhat inconsistent. And they also had the effectiveness of their critical hits somewhat adjusted relative to other weapons. Um, because that they were proving to be a little too strong in the hands of assassins, apparently. Uh, because assassins can, of course, make critical hits happen very often. So, the scythe is the dervish's weapon. Um, now, dervishes also have another very special mechanic. It's called a form. Uh, specifically, these are elite forms. They're the only profession to have forms. I think... Yeah, these blessings here, we'll talk about them uh, after the Paragon when I get to the PvE-only skills. Uh, but the um, these are also elite forms. They work a bit differently, but the basic idea of a form, and I think we talked about this with Mesmer, because I think there was a Mesmer skill that couldn't copy forms, but they add a bunch of additional properties. They're kind of a, a super buff. So this is a skill that applies a change to me. It says... For 74 seconds, I gain plus 20 armor against physical damage. I gain adrenaline 25% faster. My attacks deal holy damage. And whenever I lose a dervish enchantment, all nearby foes are set on fire for 3 seconds. Then it disables itself for 45 seconds. The 20 second recharge... Uh, like, I'll talk about this when I get to these skills. But this is what they do. They apply this effect to you that turns you into a representation of that deity. And this is kind of the ultimate mechanic of the, um, of the dervish in that they have this whole ability to become embodied avatars 
of their deity with these form skills, literally avatar of Balthazar. You become an avatar of Balthazar and you take on properties of that deity. There's one for um, the five initial gods. Um, for those who know about Guild Wars lore, Cormir gets added as a god, but she gets added at the end of Nightfall, the profession that added the dervish, and so they, they did not make an avatar for her. It would have been cool if they had added one in Nightfall, but here we are. Um, so I added Balthazar's Rage. If I lose that, you'll notice it triggered off of me losing a dervish enchantment. Uh, so that's some of the the major mechanics going on in Dervish. Um, they have uh, scythes, they have um, flash enchantments, they have stuff that care about being enchanted, they have stuff that wants to remove Dervish enchantments, they have the forms. Let's quickly go over the attributes. So there's Scythe Mastery, which, as you expect, is the weapon attribute for scythes. It's what scythes require. Nine Scythe Mastery, uh, in that the scythe I'm wielding's case. And there's a bunch of attack skills for scythes. That's what you'd expect. Uh, and then there's wind prayers. So wind prayers are... So wind prayers and earth prayers are kind of the support attribute lines. There's not necessarily an inherent difference to them per se, other than like thematic stuff. So um, earth prayers tends to be flavored more like earth stuff. It tends to be more defensive. It tends to be a little bit more like... Melandru flavored, I guess you could say. Whereas uh, Wind Prayers... Let's see. Yeah, I guess Melandru flavored is... It's weird. Um, the Dervish primarily refers to... Like, it refers to kind of... Duena and Balthazar and Grenth a bit more. Um, and I think there might be some stuff. But, like, Lissa also shows up a good bit. Um, I feel like Melandru is somewhat underrepresented. Um, and Grenth and Duena and Lissa are all more represented with some Balthazar stuff thrown in. Uh, I guess Natural Healing is kind of um, Melandru flavored. But Wind Prayers tends to be a little bit more... Um, it's focused a little bit differently, a little bit more quickly. But you, you have skills like Mystic Twister, which is... Very similar to um, Mystic Sandstorm, sort of. So they're, they're just kind of like different flavors uh, and groups. And then there's Mysticism, which is the primary attribute, uh, which has all of the avatars in it and has some other kind of like general stuff. Uh, so Mysticism also has this property of each rank of it decreases the cost of your Dervish enchantments by 4%. And also, you get plus one armor per rank of mysticism while you're enchanted in PvE. So I currently have plus 12 armor while I'm enchanted. So that makes me a bit of additional bulk. One of the other themes that's also really important to be aware of that the Dervish has is maximum health. It's a little bit of a minor theme that's kind of woven into the profession. But this is notably seen on... Is it the chest piece? Yeah, see? Uh, this chest piece right here says health plus 25 at the bottom so there's plus 50 for my superior vigor rune plus 15 from survivor but then just says health plus 25 dervishes chest pieces inherently give them plus 25 health that's just a property of the dervish um they also get plus five energy from their gloves and plus one energy regen each from their uh leggings and their uh shoes so they have a little bit I guess Ranger energy. Ranger's also 25 energy. Um, but they have slightly higher energy than a warrior. But they have the energy regen of a caster because they have a big spell focus. Mysticism is kind of like a... Um, it's kind of like expertise, but restrained. So it does make your Dervish enchantments cheaper, but doesn't affect anything else. And a little bit of additional armor in PvE is certainly nice. Um, let's see, that covers those. I'm just trying to think through. I've talked about scythes, uh, forms, uh, what the armor does, what mysticism does, the HP theme. Yeah, so one of the things that you'll see with the HP theme uh, that I wanted to mention is with Chilling Victory here is an example of it. Uh, it says if it hits, it strikes for some damage and for each foe hit with, who has less health than you, that foe and all adjacent foes are struck for 27 cold damage. So if I go... Um, I don't know, to this thing and build up my adrenaline some. I can demonstrate that to you. 
Uh, just take a couple of hits on that. And then if I go over here and then I use this, boom, you saw all those 27s. That's because I had more HP when I hit those enemies. Uh, you also can gain adrenaline very quickly with Scythe because it can hit multiple enemies at once. Um, and so that that 27 is from that uh, because I have more HP. So that's a theme that you will see as well. It's very similar to the warrior skill Thrill of Victory, which gives you more adrenaline if you have more HP. Uh, now let's go ahead and take a quick look at Insignia. Uh, I don't think there's any special runes for the... the I think it's mainly just the warrior that has a special rune. But the dervish, uh, as you'd expect, has the runes for each of their things. Mysticism is very expensive. You have the Forsaken Insignia, which gives you plus 10 armor while you're not affected by an enchantment spell. Obviously, this isn't terribly exciting because you already get uh, additional armor while you are enchanted if you're in PvE. So losing, like, it kind of compensates, but you kind of prefer to be enchanted a lot of the time. So Blessed Insignia works really well with Dervish as well. This is a general insignia that anyone can use, um, but I wanted to point it out just because it is relevant here. The only other insignia that the Dervish has is the Windwalker insignia, which gives you plus five armor per enchantment that you have up to four enchantments. So this one is very expensive, and you can understand why. Um, this can give you plus 20 armor. Dervish by default has 70 base armor, so that bumps you up to 90 if you have four enchantments on you and with mysticism that's bumping you up to like 100 armor which halves damage that you take so dervishes can become quite tanky uh they are predominantly frontline fighters because of their uh, yeah and this is a blessed armor set that i have um they are primarily frontline warriors due to their um uh, scythe being a melee weapon so uh, being able to be additionally tanky that way is very beneficial. So they do play in a bit of a different space than some of the other uh, attacking professions. So just because of the synergies that they have, they're often wanting to do stuff with their enchantments or maybe they're going into the avatar form or things like that. So um, that's kind of an overview of the dervish. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here. And uh, in the next video, I will be talking about, let's see, I believe it is Earth Prayers. Uh, yeah, Earth Prayers. So until then, everyone, take care and goodbye.